Hi there, it's Asia. So far, I've taken the IELTS exam five times and I achieved band nine in IELTS listening on four occasions. And it was actually the last time when I got only 8.5 and I even know which word I misspelled. Anyways, the very first time I took my exam, I could still get band 9 even though my English skills were far from being perfect and I had never been to an English-speaking country at that point. And today I would like to share with you my tips that will help you perform better in your test and hopefully achieve a higher score. Okay, let's get started! <music> Right now, let me quickly tell you about the IELTS listening exam format just to make sure we're all on the same page. IELTS listening is the same for academic and general training students. It lasts for 30 minutes. There are 40 questions split into four sections. And questions generally get harder as you progress. If you answer 30 questions out of 40 correctly, you get a 7. 35 questions and you get an 8. All 40 questions and you get the perfect band 9 score. If you take a paper-based exam, then at the end of the test you need to transfer your answers to the answer sheet and you get 10 minutes to do that. If you take a computer-based test, you don't need to transfer your answers and you get 2 minutes to quickly check them. Now, let's talk about the main difficulty in the IELTS listening test. The IELTS listening test is intense. You need to listen to the recording while you're reading your questions and writing down your answers. And you know, I've been living in London for 10 years and I'm hoping to become a British citizen by the end of this year, fingers crossed. But I still can't do it. I can't listen and read at the same time. So what I do instead is I try to redirect time from other activities and read questions which are coming next. If you take several practice tests, you know that the test begins with instructions which are read pretty slowly and they are the same every time. So you spend this time on reading questions from the first section. And then after you answer them, those questions are relatively simple then you get 30 seconds to review your answers. So, I don't review them. I spend this time on reading questions from the second section, which are already longer, and then I have more time to memorize all the options and so on, and it will be easier for me to answer those questions. And if I missed something in the first section, I will come back to that question in the time after the test. So, you can still do that. Basically, my strategy is to learn the exam format and to use the instruction time and revision time to read the questions which are coming next. You know, in the IELTS listening test, things happen quickly. And let's discuss how you can cope with the pace of this exam. Well, first of all, you should know that they discuss each option only once. If you hear that it's incorrect, that's it, you can cross it out, they will not come back to this option. Or if you hear that a certain answer is correct, you can mark it as correct and move on to the next question. They will not say later, oh no, actually we said that is correct, but that is not correct. They never do that. And to help yourself navigate through the test, you need to identify the keywords in questions and in longer options. The keywords are the words which determine what this question is about. And they will discuss all the options. If you have, for example, multiple choice questions, you have three options or six options, they will talk about each of them. And these are the little details which determine which answer is correct or incorrect but the keywords help you understand which option they are discussing. So if you take the paper-based exam, you can simply underline all the keywords. If you take a computer-based test, there is a function to highlight them in yellow, but I find that it just takes too much time and it's better to simply try to memorize the keywords. This will help you to avoid the next danger, missing several answers in a row. 
It may happen if you're listening to the recording and you miss the correct answer, but you don't realize that that's happened, so you keep on listening, and then you miss the next question, and then you understand that you're lost, but you don't know what they're talking about now, and you miss several questions in a row. So that's a situation to avoid, and using keywords can help you do that, but also you should try to keep an eye on two questions at the same time, your question and the next question. You don't need to remember both questions, just the keyword from the next question, and if you hear it, it's time to move on. After all, if you miss one answer, it's not a big problem. And if you don't know what the answer is, or you're not sure, just mark this question to review, and you will come back to it at the end of the test. If you take a paper-based exam, you can just draw an exclamation, a question mark, uh, next to this question. And if you take a computer-based test, there will actually be a tick to review, and then you will see all the questions you want to review in the two minutes after the test. Now let's talk about difficult types of questions. And the first one is filling the gap. That's what you usually have at the very beginning of your listening test. And here is how it looks. You have gaps you need to fill in with words. Here it's important to read the instructions. Write one word and or a number for each answer. This means that you can write one word, you can write a number, you can write one word and a number, for example $10 but you cannot write two words because that will make your answer incorrect. So let's have a look at some. And I will show you how you should try to help yourself find the correct answers. Number one, photos must not be in a mm hmm or an album. So try to anticipate what kind of word you're looking for. Is it a noun or a verb? In this case, it's clearly a noun because we have an article A and it's a singular noun. And then try to figure out what kind of word would fit there. So photos must not be in an album or so that's something similar to an album. So the answer is frame and it's not a frame. It's just frame one word. Next, cost. The cost for 360 photos is pounds, mm -hmm, including one disc. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the price, a number. So the correct answer is 21. And you have to write this number. If you spell it out, 21, these are two words and that will make your answer incorrect. Now, question number five. The mm hmm and contrast can be improved if necessary. So again, what are we looking for? We're looking for a noun because we see the article the. And it's something that can be improved along with the contrast. So the answer is color. And in IELTS listening, you can use the British or the American spelling, whichever you prefer. Just remember that spelling counts. If you spell a word incorrectly, it will not be counted as a correct answer. And sometimes if you're hesitant and you're not sure how to spell a word, a good trick is to take a sheet of paper and just write this word down in several different ways, look at it and see which one looks correct. Sometimes we don't remember how to write it, but we can recognize it when we see it. Also, Completed sentences must be grammatically correct. So when you have some time to review your answers after your test, read each sentence where you fill the gap and see if the sentence is correct. For example, if you write in question one, photos must not be in a, a frame, that's incorrect because the article is there twice. The sentence should be correct and yes, Never write articles in your answers. Sometimes you need to write down a name of a person or a street name. 
And what you should know is that those names have a spelling which is more complex than it may seem. Let me give you a couple of examples. Could you please take a sheet of paper and a pen and try to write those down? So here is the first one. You hear a dialogue and someone says, could you please give me your name? Of course, it's James Rosie. Rosie, is it R-O-S-Y? No, it's R-O-Z-I-E. You see, the surname is more complex than it seemed. And first they gave you an alternative, an incorrect spelling, and then the correct one. So be prepared for that. Sometimes they give you the correct spelling straight away, like in the second example. Could you please give me your address? Of course, it's 10 Leicester Square. Leicester, could you spell it for me? Of course, it's L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R. Again, it's more complex than it seemed. Sometimes you may need to write down a number, a telephone number, a house number, or a flat number. And I have a few examples for you to practice. Ready? Could you give me your telephone number? It's 0784-506-4660. Did you get it? Okay. O is what we call zero in a telephone number. O. And if you have two of them, you say double O, like 007, James Bond. And if you have three digits which are the same, it's triple, triple seven or triple six, a number to avoid. Here are two more telephone numbers. Let's practice. Ready? The first one is 0500765932. Okay, did you get this one correctly? Let's try once more. 0996585767. And here is the telephone number. If you have like 99, you don't have to say double nine. They may say nine nine. So be ready for that too. And for house and flat numbers, you may just get a number 13 or 85, but you may also get a letter. For example, 25A or 30B. I actually had that in one of my previous tests, so be prepared. I think that the two most complex types of questions in IELTS listening are multiple choice questions, especially when those options are long, and label the map questions. And for them, I have two separate videos with strategies and practice tasks, and I will link them in the description. And now let me give you a few tips for the paper-based and computer-based IELTS listening. If you take a paper-based exam, then in IELTS listening, you can work directly on the question sheets, which is very convenient. You can underline keywords and it takes virtually no time. You can cross out incorrect options. Imagine you have four options. You hear that two of them are incorrect. You eliminate them, but then you miss the correct answer you have just two options left, which means that you have a 50% chance to guess it correctly, which is a good thing. But in IELTS listening paper-based exam, you need to be careful about the exam format, the answer format. For example, if you have a question like this and the correct answers are cleaning and shopping, and you write those words on the answer sheet, these are incorrect answers because you need to use the letters B and D. So be careful about that. It's not a problem in a computer-based exam because you simply click on the correct options. But in the computer-based test, you have no time to use their highlight to highlight keywords. You simply memorize them and there is no easy way to cross out incorrect answers either. They will give you a 
sheet of paper with instructions and a pencil that you can use to take notes, but there is no time for that. So I think that you should just concentrate on the screen with your mouse and just click on correct answers. And that's it. In the computer-based test, all questions are split into four screens, 10 questions per screen. And when the test opens, uh, you see probably the first eight or nine questions and you need to scroll down to reveal the 10th question. The very first time I took a computer-based test, I almost missed it, so be careful and scroll down. And also, when the test moves on to the second section, you need to click to go there. The screen will not change automatically. And you don't need to wait for the instructions to go to the second section. As soon as the 10th question is done, you can click and start reading those questions straight away. And you have a convenient function to mark questions to review at the bottom of the screen. If you're wondering how it all looks, how the computer-based platform looks and how to use it, I have a video demonstration and I will link it in the description box below. Now let's discuss how you should spend your revision time at the end of the test. In a paper-based test, you have 10 minutes. That's quite a lot of time. So first of all, transfer all the answers you're certain about to the answer sheet. And here, pay attention to the answer format and don't write a word like cleaning instead of a letter B, as we discussed before. Then try to figure out answers to questions you missed. Sometimes if you read it again, you can just guess what the answer is. If not, just mark one answer. Answer all the questions by the end because you don't lose any points for incorrect answers and you always have a chance to guess it correctly. And finally, check your filling the gap questions. Check the spelling of your words and check that the grammar of each completed sentence is correct. 10 minutes should be enough to do it all. In the computer-based test, you have just two minutes, but you don't need to transfer your answers. So spend this time on figuring out answers to questions you missed or wanted to revise and check filling the gap questions. Finally, if we're talking about how you should prepare for your IELTS listening test, it really depends on how much time you have before your test. I have a detailed video with instructions to prepare in one week, one month and three months and you can see it right on the screen. Thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam.